Okay, folks, the day's finally arrived. Uh, <clears throat> I've now got in front of me the 88 Arms Airborne Rifle, which belongs to uh, Dennis Naylor at the club. Okay, as you can see, the rifle comes in a box, but not in its own case like some of the uh, Turkish PCPs, such as Atson and Kral, but uh, not a bad start. Uh, Comes with quite an in-depth manual. Uh, comes with a target card, which was uh, come at the factory, I believe. Okay then, I've got the, uh, the airborne rifle in front of me now. Uh, so it belonged to uh, Dennis Naylor. And uh, Dennis in the past, he was a professional shotgun coach. And he did say, He'd actually owned an ATA shotgun here, so it was really good. Uh, ATA, like a lot of the Turkish air gun companies, they started off with shotgunners. And uh, the owner of ATA started off at an early age, really good mechanically, even at 13 years of age. But uh, he was so good at what he did, it ended up being a really good company. And... Uh, they have got a partnership with Beretta now. But just recently, within the last year, they've started uh, producing an air rifle. And this is the one they've started off with. It's a bottle design. Uh, uh, I'll just check out the capacity. I'm sure it's something like 540cc. That should say on the bottle. Uh, yeah, 545cc air tank. Uh, it's filled up from underneath, it's got a screw cap there, I'll just go through that procedure now I've had to remove that. And how to fill it. Okay then, quite a nice clear manometer on the right hand side, so there's no, no need to be looking down the front end of the rifle. The rifle does come fitted with uh, an half inch UN threaded moderator, so that saves you £30 plus on that and it does work quite well actually. <laughs> Uh, safety on it, it's uh, a safety catch that's on the actual trigger itself, similar to what air arms do. From the left hand side you push it in to put the safety catch on and using the index finger to take it off and it will fire. comes with Picatinny rails or Weaver rails and that is it. Uh, unlike Kraut and Hatson, wherever their rails are either. So it doesn't matter what mount you've got it will fit because uh, they dovetail and uh, Weaver. But this one you've got to get the right mount for it. Uh, this one is regulated uh, and it does work quite well actually very well in fact the stock is turkey walnut and it's a lovely grain on this on the stock it's like a really good uh, piece of furniture really uh, <clears throat> all the rifles are quality control tested and it's got the label on it now it's keeping that one on magazines in 2-2 two -two, they are 12 shot currently they're only doing the 2-2s two but I've uh, been informed that uh, the rifles will be 
available in 177025 and also as well as a walnut stock they'll be coming out of a laminate which is a blue laminate and a brown laminate. The actual magazines, when they slide in, you've actually got magnets on the bottom. So you get it so far, load it from the right hand side. But so far it slides in on its own because the magnet catches it. Uh, really good, right, there's no ammunition in it. So you can tell it's not very loud and that's indoors. Uh, looking at the book pad, nice little book pad there. It's not adjustable. It don't really need to be, but if you wanted to adjust it, you, you could take that one off and fit an adjustable book, book pad. And what more do you want for £395? Because that's why I pay for this. And most, most most dealerships are charging around £400 for these, so it's not much at all, is it? Fill pressure on this is uh, maxed out at 220 bar. Uh, not sure of the shot count, but uh, with it being regulated and that kind of capacity, I expect to get close to a tin of pellets through it. Uh, grip wise, it's got a flat bottom to it. <clears throat> it's got nice laser checking on the rear grip and on the fore grip. It's nice and comfortable. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I really like it. Uh, I mean, Turkey and I, they do seem to be coming out with lots of new air gun companies and most of these people are, have got the experience in shotguns but uh, the NAS seeming to move on to air guns as well. Uh, now underneath it, if you wanted to fit a bipod, it's actually got a threaded hole there. So <clears throat> I know with some of the crowls, they come with a threaded hole but they also come with a small Picatinny rail and you can screw them on. Not too keen on that idea because you need, for, for a good Picatinny to make it nice and uh, solid, you need two points of contact, not one. But you can get uh, the QD studs, you can get some QD studs that, that are threaded, so whether that one of those would fit, I'm not sure, but you could ask your local dealer that anyway. <laughs>
next up crown graphing Okay then, I've got the uh, ATA Airborne in front of me now, I'm going to put it over the chronograph, several different pallets, see what kind of power it's putting out. First one will be Day State and Range Master Sovereign, and these weigh 15.89 grains. 11. 11.5 11.5 Eleven point five. Eleven point four. Eleven point seven. Eleven point five. Eleven point six. Eleven point seven. Eleven point five. Eleven point five eleven point four okay pretty consistent there <clears throat> I filled the bar the raft to 200 bar can be filled to 220 uh, but I filled it to 200 uh, so look at the results then that was an average of 11 and a half foot pounds high of 11 seven low of 11 four <clears throat> an average of a five seven one high of a five seven five low of five six eight so that's a spread of seven Standard deviation of 2.3, so that's really consistent with the uh, range master sovereigns there. So the next one up will be the heavier ones. Uh, putting the heavier ones through because uh, this will bring it more power, I would have thought. And these are the JSB exact jumbo overs at 18.13 grains, so that's the next one up. Nice big magazines, nice big cocking lever, easier to uh, operate. Don't know why. Uh, hang on a minute. Let's just check. Yeah, that's why. Set up wrong. It should show now. It was uh, left on the American settings. Five hundred forty. It is. 11. 11.6 11.6 11.5 11.6 11.6 11.6 11.6 Eleven point six. Eleven point <clears throat> six. So same again. Very consistent. Uh, so it's good regulator on these. Uh, so average of eleven six, high of eleven eight, low of eleven five. Remember, I did shoot twelve of these, but only rested ten of them because of uh, I've got the uh, settings on US. So feet per second, that was average five three six. High at 540, low 534. It's a spread of six and a standard devi deviation of 1.4. So that's really good. Uh, so the next one up then will be the Akipels, which weigh 14.3 grains. Okay then. Next one up is the Akipel, 14.3 grains. 
Eleven point six. Eleven point four. Eleven point eight. Eleven point five. Eleven point five. Eleven point six. Eleven point five. Eleven point seven. Eleven point four. Eleven point six. Eleven point five. Eleven point five. Okay then, so that's the Akitels. <coughs> not much in it between the heavy and the low to be honest uh, average of 11.5 high of 11.8 low of 11.4 foot pounds gives us an average of 603 feet per second a high of 610 a low of 698 that's a spread of 12 standard deviation of 3.5 so again a really good result if you want a flatter trajectory these are moving probably 70 feet per second faster than the rest of the pellets so you'll get a bit a bit more of a flatter trajectory with these but over a longer distance you'll lose the energy <coughs> change the magazine now these are normally an efficient pellet so if anything's going to take over it could be these 13 yeah point zero 12 point eight as well so average of 13 I have 13 3 low of 12 8 so that's an average of 607 feet per second high of 615 low of 603 spread of 12 standard deviation 3.6 and I knew if anything was going to take these save it would be the 80s okay so that will need sorting out <clears throat> so the last one up in this particular test is the GSB exact lead freeze at 11.75 grains. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what speed they'll go up to, but I wouldn't imagine these would go over the limit. Okay then. So the last one up on test is the uh, GSB lead freeze. 11.75 grain. 11.6. 11.7. Point six, eleven point seven, eleven point six, eleven point six, eleven point five, eleven point five, eleven point six, eleven point. Seven, eleven point six, eleven point eight, eleven point seven. Okay, then, so that is the uh, chronographing finished. And the lead freeze came up with an average of eleven six, a high of eleven eight, a low of eleven five feet per second. Gave it us an average feet per second of. 668, a high of 673, a low of 663, spread of 10, standard deviation 2.8. So really efficient with those and all the different rifles I've shot these through have been really accurate as well. They're the same as the uh, Predator GTOs basically.
So that is the conclusion of the uh, chronograph test with these particular pellets. I have got a lot more pellets to try through it, but I'm just going to chronograph those to show you what the difference is between the different weights and different types. Now, as you can see, most of them there did uh, pretty much similar, depending on, you know, it didn't matter what, whether it was heavy or light. But the one that did stand out there, because of its efficient, was the Hades. And I have found this before that put your Hades through the chronograph, you don't have to worry about any other pellet because they're normally quite efficient down the barrel. So, I mean, based on that, the rifle needs detuning if you're going to shoot those pellets. Uh, so, next up, the five pellets that I've just tested through the chronograph, I will shoot them on the backyard range to see how well they do, and then we'll that's only 20 yards, but I'll get down the range at uh, another date and uh, we'll see. Uh, see how accurate they are at longer ranges. So far the rifles perform really well through the uh, regulated side of things. It's a chronograph test for the 88 Airborne in 2.2. Okay then, <coughs> using the same pellets that I've just chronographed. <coughs> Test them out down range. Go for the zero first. Doing quite well actually. So it's come to the to the left. All right, I'm going to go for the uh, I'm going for the top left. It. Really accurate, very accurate. Oh, one left. For, uh, for a rifle that costs less than 400 quid and regulated, can't go wrong. The next one is the GSB Exact Jumbo Evis. 18.13. Gonna fire one at the zero target. Find the one. There you go. Okay. That's the top right. The uh, silence is doing a good job as well. Empty. Really good uh, thing to add. So the next one will be Acapels. Nice big magazines. Now these are the ones you load from the back first. So it's got an arrow on it pointing the direction of rotation. So you go all the way around. Put the first one in upside down. Turn it over. 
and then just throw them in. Running out of daylight now. What I'm going to do, save time, I'm going to fire two shots at the zero and then five at the actual targets. <clears throat> Dennis told me that he'd, uh, he'd fired several pellets for, through it and he thought it was pellet fussy. I forgot to ask him if he'd cleaned the barrel out before he'd tested them. So what I did, I actually cleaned the barrel. And these all seem to be doing really well. So it likes those three pellets. Now we're going to the, uh, the Hades, which hit like sledgehammers. Okay, <clears throat> the loading from the right hand side, so if you've got a scope wheel it's not going to get in the way, and that's how they should all be doing it now. Right, two at the target. Yep, so bottom centre. Well, with every pellet I've shot up tonight. So the last one up will be the JSB lead freeze on the gate. <coughs> to the target. It's got an because it's light. And it's going in the same level, so. Aim down. Okay, so you're all doing really well. So the next time you'll see me now, I'll be down at the range, testing these out from 30 yards and above, and as well as these, I'll, I'll be testing a few more as well, see what worked through the barrel. But it don't seem to be a barrel fussy at 20 yards anyway, so regulator's working well, really nice rifle. Trigger is a bit heavy, but it's not been adjusted out of the box. It's a two-stage adjustable trigger, the adjustment hole is there to kind of lighten it. It's not much travel in the first stage and then it suddenly goes. So uh, that is the ATA airborne on the backyard test.